Okay, hi there, and welcome to a macroeconomics video. In this exercise, we're going to take a look at some examples of changes in injections and leakages in the circular flow model. So a previous video took you through how we built up this model of the macro economy involving a trade sector and a financial sector. The key, of course, domestic circular flow between households and firms. In the full model, there are three injections of demand, three ways other than consumer spending where we can add to the demand for goods and services. And those injections are exports, government spending and investment. And in the model, there are three ways that money can leak or withdraw from the circular flow, either in the form of imported goods and services, taxation and savings, people's disposable income that is not spent. So in this exercise, I'm going to give you some examples of an economic event. And uh, the idea behind the exercise is you choose which injection or leakage is or are likely to be most affected by the event. And on balance, what's the likely impact, the likely effect on the level of GDP, either an expansion or contraction. Might be worth at this point pausing the video on the YouTube channel here and having a go at these yourself. I'll also put a link in the video for a download, a PDF file, so you can download these examples yourself and maybe print them off and have a go. Here's my first seven changes. What's, uh, which injection or leakage is most likely to be affected? X for exports, I for investment, G for government spending, S for savings, M for imports, T for tax. And on balance, what's the likely effect on the level of GDP? So if you're ready, have a go yourself, and then let's go through the answers in a few seconds. So our first event, a survey finds a fall in confidence for UK firms. The likely effect, I think, is a fall in planned investment. Businesses are less confident about demand and output, and other things being the same, that will lead to a contraction in GDP. Second one, a survey finds that construction companies Building industries expect house prices to fall by 2% in 2020. What do we think here? Well, my instinct again would be that that would be a possible fall in investment. Uh, construction companies may well invest in, in, in less capital and machinery to build new homes. And again, that would cause a contraction. Third one, the pound falls by 10%. The pound depreciates by 10% against the US dollar and the euro, perhaps because of increasing uncertainty over Brexit. Well, a falling pound has significant effects in many, many different ways. Which injection or leakage most likely to be affected? I've plumped for exports. A fall in the pound, in theory, makes exports more price competitive in overseas markets and, in theory, should be a stimulus to demand. But, of course, you'll be able to evaluate that point. There are some downsides as well as some upsides from a fall in the pound. Number four, the government decides to end the pay freeze on the pay and the wages of NHS staff and state school teachers and decides to raise pay, lift pay by 3%. What do we think for number four? My instinct here, this is mainly a fiscal stimulus. It's an increase in government spending, which again, other things being the same, is likely to be expansionary on GDP. Number five, China reduces the size of a tariff on British made steel. So it's China cutting their tariff on British steel. What do we think is likely to happen here? Well, my instinct is this one is a, a, a change in exports, which will be expansionary for the economy. A new forecast from the IMF suggests that unemployment in the UK will fall by 200,000 over the next two years. So the people are forecasting that unemployment will fall. Is there going to be a change in one of those injections and leakages? I think conceivably, yes, you could say there's a rise in imports, for example, because people uh, the people who find work will have more money to spend. I've gone for a fall in the savings ratio. I think if people expect unemployment to keep falling, there'll be a greater degree of job security and perhaps that would lead to an expansion. But again, lots of scope for debate about which of these might change. Final one on this slide, the government just decreases the, the standard rate of VAT to a new rate of 15%, a cut in VAT. What do we think for this one? Well, I think this is an example of a cut in tax, which again, other things being the same, leaves people with more in their pockets to buy other goods and services, 
fallen VAT should reduce the price of some items, uh, meaning an expansion of demand. Here's our second set. There's another seven for us to have a go at here, 14 in total. How did you do on the first seven? Uh, again, press the pause button on this one if you want to have a go yourself on this little exercise. Uh, I'll give you a little hint. There's a couple here that are really quite tricky. But have a go for a few minutes and then just press the, the play button when you want to go through together. The first one, the government decides to increase the road building project, uh, road building programme, motorways and bypasses by £500 million. What do we think is going to happen here? Well, that's really an increase in government spending, which will be expansionary, an increase in a fiscal stimulus then. Number two, the price of many consumer products starts to fall and people expect further price reductions in the future. What did you think for this one? My instinct is that that would probably, if people expect prices to carry on falling, they may well hold back from spending and therefore probably save more. And for a given level of income, if they save more, other things being the same, that is contractionary for aggregate demand. It's an increase in the leakage. Number three, the Bank of England's Monetary Policy Committee decides to raise official interest rates, the base rate, from 0.75% to 1.5%. They probably do that in three different stages. What do we think about this one? Now, higher interest rates. Which one are you going to go for? I think probably a fall in planned investment by businesses, particularly in businesses operating in what's called interest rate sensitive sectors, like housing and, and uh, lots of things like home improvements and, and big ticket purchases. You could also say that it might lead to an increase in the savings rate because the rate of interest on savings might go up. And it could also feed through the exchange rate to change the level of imports and exports. But I've gone for investment and a contraction. The next one, the government increases revenues from taxes on high income earners by £4 billion and uses the money to increase spending on welfare payments to low income families by £4 billion. What do we think is going to happen to... Uh, GDP in a sense. I think the answer is that it's obviously a change in spending and tax. I think on balance expansionary because you're taking money away from people, high income earners who typically save a, a high amount and using it to increase the incomes of people who typically have a higher propensity to spend. Overall I would argue that would be expansionary. Three more to go, see how you're doing. Improvements in labour productivity, Cause lower costs and increased profits for car producers located in the UK. Well, with this one, I think that would probably be expansionary because higher profits mean that they have more money to reinvest in machinery, factory space, etc. Two to go. The Chancellor announces a reduction, a fall in the rate of national insurance contributions paid by smaller businesses when they take people on. What do we think here? I think the answer to this one is that that's a fall in a leakage, a fall in taxation, which will be expansionary to the economy because it reduces the cost of taking on workers. The last one, Nissan announces that it's cancelling a planned expansion of their factory in the northeast due to fears over the UK's trade relationship with the EU post Brexit. So Nissan announces cancelling a planned expansion. Likely, um, likely injection or leakage that changes is investment and exports. I think investment first up, because clearly they're cancelling or postponing a planned investment. The investment is going to go down. And most of the output of Nissan from the UK, most of the output of cars, is actually exported to the European Union. So you make a case for saying this will be a fall in investment with a knock-on effect on exports. Either way the things being the same. In the absence of any offsetting factors, it's going to cause a contraction in GDP. There we go. We've been through 14 examples in this video of changes in injections and leakages. Oftentimes, you can discuss and build the analysis of how changes in injections and leakages affect GDP, the rate of economic growth, and uh, the different stages of the economic cycle.